All right, sisters fans, I already whipped together a video on Saturday, right? That's when we got the surprise news that Tyler Perry is working remotely on the script for Sisters Season 4. This video is just a couple of bullet points about ways the show could, you know, improve because, well, it's a bit too late to talk Season 3 improvements, given the fact that obviously Season 3 was fully filmed and whatnot a while ago, and, you know, we're picking up where we left off on October 13th. I will be doing a separate video that will just be going over ways that the back half of Season 3 could potentially save the season as a whole due to the fact that, well... If you haven't guessed it, I am not the biggest fan of season three. I don't think this will be a good season overall. Like I said before, like I want to say around the week of episode eight of season three, even if the back half is perfect, like even if I give the back half of the season 10 out of 10s all the way around, it won't make up for the fact that we had to sit through 11 episodes of meh. So these are just my opinion. I feel like a lot of people feel the same way, and I doubt Tyler Perry is going to watch this, but in my mind, these are ways that Season 4 could be improved when compared to Season 3, and considering Tyler Perry is currently writing, writing the season now. Um, so before going further in the video, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, and let's jump right into it. This is something I've said more times than... Uh, characters on the Oval have said, Sir and Ma'am, we would love to see character progression, not regression. Basically, don't have these characters going through a problem or a situation for like the eighth time in the series, and it seems like, oh great, they're finally learning their lesson. Not every problem is caused by an outside source. Maybe they're the problem. So let me kind of tweak some of my own choices i don't want to necessarily say personality but my own choices and decision decision making methods in order to come out with a better outcome but then either by the mid-season finale or season finale the characters are written in such a way where it's like they haven't learned a damn thing at all just to set up more storyline slash problems in the following season so just writing these characters to move forward as people slash characters would be a great help of making the show be better. Um, I honestly, the next two points on my list kind of go into point one. And I think the cash, maybe I don't think the cash should be cut in my notes. I say cut the cash down, but I don't think cutting the cast down is the problem. I think somewhat of a rotating cast would be a benefit. Like Tyler said, hey, we love Cheeto. He's going to be around for a while. But why is Gary still going to be there? I think some of these casts need to be let go and have other cast members brought in. Sure, you know, you got to deal with the whole, but is this cast member's chemistry working with the other? They don't have to be main characters. I'm thinking love interests like... This show is supposed to cater to... Look, I'm a 30-year-old black man talking about the show, and I actually love it, uh, well, for the most part. I'm not the... I'm clearly not the target audience. Obviously, women are. But at the same time, as a man, I can get some solid real life and... Well, well some of the things on the show definitely can be interpreted into real-life situations. When you think about sisters... I feel like this was the mistake. This was probably, in my opinion, the first big mistake of the series. Where season one ended with a huge FBI raid on the country, the house out in the country that Gary had planned to, um, you know, live in with Andy. I feel like that was the biggest, oh, that moment of sisters was the same feeling I felt when Charles was first introduced to the Haves and the Half-Nots. You just took a realistic situation, you know, about a person in getting involved with somebody who's married and then the wife or partner finding out and then it blows up in their face, it ruins their career because, you know... Oh my gosh, the person I'm sleeping with, their spouse wants me to defend them, you know, this kind of thing. Basically, it's a small world. But when you took it to the FBI level, 
and Andy basically was on the verge of losing everything. Sure, she got everything back and more, but she almost lost it all dealing with Gary. But yet she's still messing around with him, and now they're quote-unquote engaged and whatnot. I feel like that's when Tyler Perry just went way too crazy. That's like, you know, if you want to go that crazy, that's like season four or something, not season one. Obviously, that was a ploy to get, you know, people, oh my God, I got to tune into season two. But when you have a character like Andy who was put through all that, act like it's no big deal. Hell, we even had the ex-wife show up, shoot Gary in front of her and try to shoot Andy. But either she ran out of bullets or the gun just stopped working. And yet Andy just acts like, you know, oh, it was no big deal when her friends confronted her about it when Karen brought the uh, court documents. Oh, well, see, um, yeah, so she came in, uh, Gary got shot, and, you know, it's being handled. That doesn't seem real. I feel like <laughs> making these stories more relatable would definitely work out. You can't have, th that's like saying, um, Andy and Gary, well, nowadays this actually is realistic based off, you know, these billionaires taking these rockets to space. Let's say if, This sounds so stupid, but this is what the script feels like sometimes. Let's say Jasmine, I don't know, traps Andy on a rocket and get and she gets stuck on Jupiter for like three weeks. And then the next thing you know, oh, uh, she locked her in her car and she couldn't get out threatening to set it on fire. That's like, you're probably like, Jeremy, what the hell are you talking about? That's how I feel watching the show sometimes. You can't have, like, a level 15 threat be relegated to a level 2 where it's like, oh, it's no big deal. Because at that point, it's like, okay, Tyler, where are you Where are you taking Andy? Take Gary out of the show. Put it with Robin if you want to. But then realize, wait a minute, this dude's crazy too. Because part of me feels like you're going to make Robin like Jacoby in the sense of, wow, this guy who I thought was attractive, who I felt like was a better fit for me than my original lover, Gary, Andy, Calvin, Sabrina, you go to be with that guy and it turns out he has major issues, but then you forcibly push him back because what I, what I fear is that any potential man that Andy is possibly set up with is going to be written to be flawed in some way shape or form and then andy's like wow this guy's effed up i'm gonna go back to gary when it's like wait but that guy only has like one flaw compared to like gary's 30 flaws yet you're still going to be with him see what i mean tyler needs to take out certain characters who don't really fit the mold of the show anymore because in real life it's not impossible for a person to have an on again off again relationship multiple times but in order for this show to feel fresh, you need to put in new love interests. Like, I did a Del El, El Fuego Preston video, and Danny, I'm like, honestly, I think El Fuego would have been in more a bidding more interesting character to pair with Sabrina than bringing Calvin right back to Sabrina again, even though it makes no sense. So, I think with, you know, Robin, Andy, Jacoby, uh, Sabrina... And instead of El Fuego with, you know, Danny, like I said, put, well, no, actually, if I broke Jacoby, El Fuego, Danny, I guess that could work. I just feel like, and I hate to just keep using CW references because some people hate it when I do it. But if you watch The Flash, Barry and Iris, I can't stand them because they're insufferable in their writing. So it's like any time there was a female in the early seasons, like Linda or, um... Patty, these or even Kara, aka Supergirl, any of these characters who felt like they would be excellent for Barry, they had excellent chemistry with Grant Gustin. It's like, no, we have to write them out of the show, or we need to have Barry break up with them, or whatever, because it has to be Barry or Iris, Barry and Iris. And it's like, well, hell, Barry and Felicity would have been better than you know Oliver and Felicity, but whatever. I just feel like we're going to have all these great men characters introduced to be written to be trash just to uh, excuse the fact that, well, hey, the reason Calvin and Sabrina got back together is because Jacoby ain't shit. Or the reason that Andy goes back to Gary is because Robin had ulterior motives. Um, yeah, but if Robin doesn't bruise her ribs, is he really worse than Gary? 
Huh? I don't know. Sorry for that rant. Uh, gosh, I'm sorry about that. But yeah, rotating the characters would be great. Um, I did have a joke in here about the Diary of a Mad Black tweeter from the bigger beds, not twin beds, from the hair to the outfits. I have no thoughts on that. Um, I love that Tyler Perry took a moment to joke about the twin bed thing. I'm a dude. I'm, I'm like Tyler Perry. I'm a man. I don't have knowledge of hair. Sure, it's noticeable when some hair looks like, eh, that looks a bit off, but I don't let it distract me from the story. Again, I'm a man. I don't really have a say in what the women wear. I, I mean, it seems that possibly that they don't always just have the, um, the wardrobe team do it. I mean, I, I, maybe some of the women have their say, if you will, because perhaps they have some of their own style implemented into the characters. I do not know. I feel like Novi would probably be the first person I would say, yeah, I think Novi has a say in what she wears because I just look at some of her tweets and all like the blue dress she wore recently. She said, okay, I'll make a note to have Sabrina wear blue because it got a lot of positive feedback. Like, you know, sometimes like there are a lot of colors and people are like, oh, wow, she like a, she wearing a, you know, safari thing. I have no comments on that. I think she's beautiful. Half the time, I don't even notice what she's wearing more so because her smile just distracts me. So I have no thoughts on that per se. I think the tweet about the set pieces was stupid. There have been at least 20 different locations for, you know, sisters as a whole. And um, kind of like the last thing is new issue situations. Basically, we can only see Calvin and Sabrina go through the same thing so many times before it gets boring. And it already has. We can all we can only have Danny go through the whole, I don't know what to do with a good man so many times before it gets old. And it has. Gary and Andy, I don't want to talk about that anymore. Um, Aaron, I feel like we need to know more about the guy. I don't hate the character. I just feel like he's shady. But at the same time, people bring up the fact that he has some of the best dialogue in the show. And I agree. But other than that, you know, the last thing I really want to say is Tyler Perry needs to write a moose into the show. Jeremy, what the hell? Because he had a freaking moose when he was writing the script. I want a moose reference, a bullwinkle reference, or a set of antlers somewhere. It has to happen. Have a character named Moose. The only character I can recall being named Moose was Pepper Ann's little sister in the Disney show Pepper Ann. Even though I always thought that was a boy because of the haircut and all, but it was actually a girl in the voice. I'm like, what? Well, no, I don't care. I, I need the moose and I need um, bonnets. Why bonnets? I did a video about that when the sisters cast talked about bonnets at the BET Awards. Bonnets and moose. I need one of those two things in season four because I will laugh my ass off. So with that being said, those are just my personal opinions of little tweaks of how the show could be made better in season four. Because the ratings are still high, but they aren't quite as high as season two. Maybe the back half of the season will change that. Who knows? But either way, let me know your two cents in the comment section below because I just gave you my own 10 cents. And make sure you like this video and subscribe because it really helps the channel. And I'll catch you all next time.